Hey, how's it going guys? I'm Paradoxic, and welcome back to the boys. This time we're on episode 8 of season 2, titled What I Know, and this is surprising to me. I don't know why, because there were 8 episodes last season, but this this is the season finale. This is the, this is the season 2 finale. I don't, I think it, it, to me personally, it feels like it rolled around really, really quickly. Like, for some reason, I was expecting there to be at least a few more episodes, um, because it doesn't feel like we're much closer to what the end of this story should be, or could be. Like, it doesn't really feel like we're that much closer to getting, like, any sort of climax to this season. Like, last season's finale, like, like the, the ending felt satisfactory, it felt satisfactory. With, with this one, it feels like there's more time to explore, or at least there should be more time to explore, um, what's actually going to happen and what what season three could be about afterwards? It feels like season two could be somewhat longer, but I don't know. Maybe you know, maybe they actually find a way to tie it all together and actually leave plenty. I mean, season three has been renewed. Season three has been confirmed, so maybe they leave plenty of loose ends and open ends to be uh, continued well into season three. So yeah, uh, but yeah, season two finale. So last time we had a lot of. <laughs> Just everywhere, just every, all over the courtroom, all over the courtroom. Starting with the guy who was speaking. I don't know what his name was. Starting with the guy next to Victoria Newman, uh, and then Vogelbaum, and then Shockwave, and then a bunch of other people. Um, you know, I think namely anyone who might have been a threat to vote, anyone who may well have been a threat to vote. Luckily, we didn't lose Mallory or Newman. I was really, really afraid for them too. I was really afraid for New Newman and uh, Mallory, but they managed to get out in time and. The soups, obviously, um, Stormfront, Hermandra, and Queen Maeve were all okay. They were all okay, so they were okay, and Ashley was fine. So yeah, namely anyone who was like a, in, in like an imminent imminent threat to uh, to vote, and Vogelbaum obviously being the one to testify against them, he was definitely on the chopping block. So he was gone, and then I think Shockwave. Yeah, I think I've heard that. I've heard, I've heard theories that you know Shockwave was next in line to replace A Train on the D on the seven and. The Church of the Collective is working to get the Deep and a train back into the Seven. So, if they take out Sh like it would make sense for them to want to take out Shockwave so that they can get a train back in. And they're they're already like halfway through uh, halfway through rehabbing um, the Deep's image with him being a married man and all, and him being like a newly discovered dude and stuff. So, yeah. Um, but I don't know. But there's there's a bunch of theories. There's different theories as to who it could be. I think it. I, I think it. it it could well be the church, the church of the Collective, or maybe, I mean, Cindy, I don't know if it could be Cindy. Cindy, it would make sense, physically speaking, because her power, she can crush people and make them blow up and stuff, so it would make sense, like, power-wise, but motivation-wise, I don't know if it would make sense, because it, because what she would, like, what the head-blowing thing has been doing so far has been taking taking out people who get close to Vault's secret and their dirty little truths and whatnot. So if she did that, then she'd be benefited, benefiting Vault. But then, knowing what they've done to her, she wouldn't want to do that either. So And we, we, we know that she hasn't been captured by them because she escaped from Sage Grove and managed to hitchhike her ride and stuff. So we don't know where she is. We don't know where she is, but... We know it's not, it's most likely not with Vought, so yeah, the question is who it is. I think that's the one question they should answer in this episode. Who has been blowing up people's heads? Is it a soup? Is it just someone who manages to sneak little nanobombs inside people's heads? Or what I mean, it has to be a soup, it has to be a soup, but who is it and, and why are they doing it? Are they doing it specifically for, for Vought or are they doing it of their own accord or what's happening? But I assume we'll find out, I assume we'll find that, we'll find that out. Um, and they weren't the only ones who died. Lamplighter died uh, halfway into the episode two. He uh, wanted to, he, his plan was always to get Huey into uh, into the tower so that he could do his own thing of saving uh, saving saving Annie. But his plan, Lamplighter's plan, was to commit suicide in front of the seven statue. Um, so he lit himself on fire, which again I think is stupid. It's not he's not immune to his own power. Like you know, like he he is he he could very easily die at the hands of his own power, which is just a stupid power. But he did that, he, sp he set the sprinklers off, and then that gave Annie the extra boost she needed to really blow open the doors and everything, so that was cool. Um, but then as Annie escapes, Black Noir goes after her, so then they fight a, a little bit, and then Queen Maeve comes along, and she helps her, she helps Starlight, and then she, she, um, 
she knows Black Noir's weakness. Black Noir has a tree nut allergy, which is why he hates Almond Joy, so she just literally force-fed him an Almond Joy and kicked his pen out of the way and just left him to choke on the Almond Joy. So, I don't think he's dead. I don't think... They, 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 they've, they've underused him quite a bit this season. I think this season especially, they've... Yeah, I mean, besides from a couple of episodes here and there, they've kind of underused him in terms of his appearances. So I feel like there's a lot more we need to see, and, like, you know, Black Noir is not a character that... It is not a character for whom we have any backstory, so there's still plenty of exploration to do there, so I think that's just like a minor setback, like it, it is something he can easily kind of walk back from with the help of his, with the help of his EpiPen, so yeah, I don't know what's going to happen with that, but that was a cool fight scene, um, and then after that we had um, Billy's dad, Billy's dad came by, um, his mum lied to him and told him that, you know, his dad had died from the cancer, in, in, like, because she knew that was the only thing, only thing that would actually get him to go out and visit them. So he did, and then we got some backstory on Billy and Lenny. Lenny is dead, he committed suicide and stuff, thanks to their dad's abuse. Their dad physically abused them both when they were kids, and Lenny couldn't really handle much more of it, so he bit the dust, or bit the bullet, whichever one you want to go for. Um, and then after that, I think um, he said that Billy joined the SAS after that, and then he went, went into that kind, of, uh, that kind of field of work, and then that led to him doing this stuff today, so yeah, an eventful episode, as this show usually does, you know, hour-long episodes at most, at uh, minimum, you know, just, you know, heavily, heavily eventful episodes, so yeah, uh, again, I think it, it just feels way too quick, way too quick to be, um, it feels like, it feels like we've gone really fast, but we haven't really explored, like, a whole lot um, of what this season is about, um, but yeah, we'll see how this goes. We'll see how this finale goes and see if it actually is finale worthy. Um, I don't. I, I don't think this is one of the one of the productions um, in Hollywood that actually took a hit from the pandemic. I think this one, they likely had it filmed way before any major sets had to shut down. Um, but season three has not yet started filming, so they'll have to actually wait until they can secure a safe. Uh, uh, and well-regulated kind of uh, environment to start shooting that, but I am anxious to see it. I am anxious to see uh, season three for a multitude of reasons, but, you know, as we go in, we can actually, you know, explore story-wise what season three might offer us. So, yeah, that is pretty much all I've got from this season. So, uh, this is going to be the highlight reel, as always, it's going to be the highlight reel, so if you guys want the full-length reaction to this, the full-length watch-along, that will be over on Patreon, so you can catch that over there. Uh, but yeah, that is it, so season two, episode eight, What I Know. Let's go, let's go find out. A witness, anything. If you could get Jesus Christ himself, or maybe Homelander in front of a camera, sure. Huh. I really have I think the former might be easier than the latter, yeah. You know, I always say, why do this crazy? All you need is an AR-15 and you can Exactly. Say That's one way to do it. Shoot right runner in the fucking head. <laughs> that won't stop Vought, that... Come on, why is it always, always Billy Joel? I'm 57 on the inside. No, <laughs> no, no please. <laughs> it was just the music in my house growing up. You know, I did some summer His mother listened to it. That were pretty thrilling to watch. His mother listened to Billy Joel. This is the guy? Oh, yeah, Hugh oh, Campbell. Hi, Hughie. Is he going to twin? <laughs> I can split that shit like dry firewood. Mm. Big fan. <laughs> I need to ask you something. We've heard a lot about you. <laughs> oh, God, Frenchie. I, I wish I could say yeah. the same. Uh, are you all close with Billy? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, sure. <laughs> sure. Hide the hesitation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fuck off. Man. Well, they are sweet together. They are sweet together. They are the original couple of the boys. I love you. Can I get a selfie? Sure. Selfie? Really? This is what you want to bring Ryan into? Just being surrounded by people wanting to take pictures and shit? No, this, this kind of thing is overwhelming. This is over overwhelming for any child. She's not? Oh, it's just you never mentioned I thought it. she so died. She left when I was six. Oh, she left. Oh. Shit. Oh. Oh. Okay, I thought I could have sworn he 
Where Billy Joel? Mentioned she was dead at some point. Some Holy fucking! Mm. What is wrong with you? I covered the burrows in like three hours. I went looking. Why, why are you doing this? Because I want back in. So I need her. Oh, Stormfront. Oh, it's info on Stormfront. Fuck, that's a bitch. Yeah, it's in, info on Stormfront. Yeah. Also, he, he has info on her being a Nazi and her being a racist. I can't lash out like some raging entitled maniac. That's a white man's lash. <laughs> So it's just yeah. business that I do a bigger fucking job of hunting in this time, yeah. Hmm. You have my word. Is he gonna give him back to Becca? I will get Rebecca he... and Ryan somewhere soon. No. Just Ryan. Not Becca. Becca stays with me. Yeah, but she won't leave That's Ryan the though. Point that he's raised by his mother. Find him a new fucking mum. Uh, I'm taking my wife back. That's uh, the deal. but Becca and won't leave him. When Rebecca... No, there we go. Let the internet do the rest. To <laughs> oh, oh, when Lenny so when Lenny so he's gonna break that promise so damn hard. I mean, he, he can't, right? He can't break it now. He can't. He wouldn't. Nazis are bad. Nazis are <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. The guns are more. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Homeland is here. He's gonna. I hear you say, Butcher. Oh crap! Oh, he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna wreck him. R.I.P. lads. R.I.P. Where's my son? Oh jeez, yep. Yeah. Oh, sliced him in half. Is my son? Yeah. White man privilege. White man privilege. Mm -hmm. White man luxury. Mm -hmm. Butcher. Please don't kill Butcher. No, don't tell me Butcher dies. I have a feeling Butcher's gonna die now. Because he's already made that promise to Becca. Don't tell me Butcher's gonna die. Oh no. No. Oh crap. Is she? What are you laughing at? She's gonna stick her boot up your Nazi kid. <laughs> oh, damn. Oh, yes. Stormfront and Kimiko versus. No, no. Homefront and. Uh, thingy. Storm. Uh, uh, Kimiko and Starla versus Stormfront. Yes. Yes. Oh, damn. Oh, jeez. Oh, no. Don't tell her that. Can we go? No, come on, she can heal, she can heal. Black Noir killed her, she healed from that, she can heal from this, come on. Hey, Kraut. Maeve. 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 Yes. Oh, girls get it done. Girls get it done. Girls get it done. There we go. <laughs> Oh, jeez, they are getting her. They are getting her. <laughs> Girls, get it done. Oh, no. Oh, oh, right in her eyes. Oh. Whoa. He barbecued her! Oh no! Oh, he hit Becca too! Oh, he hit Becca too! No! He's going with Billy. He's going with Billy. He's with Butcher. Yeah, he's a butcher. Stormfront's been critical of the church for a long time, and Bot needs to take a firm anti-Nazi stance right now. Wait, 
does that mean I just spoke with Stan Edgar? Oh, A Train's back in. Yeah, 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 train is, back is the deep in. back in? I'm anti Nazi. <laughs> they only had one sort. One hero is redemption, two is weakness. Yeah. They took him? Fuck yes, they did. Yeah. <laughs> well, shit. Peace out, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, Deep, but you are acting like a toxic person now. Oh, he's going to get kicked out of the D. He's going to get kicked out of the church. He's going to get kicked out of the collective, yeah. Fuck Fresco. <laughs> Fuck Fresco. That's their, that's their brand. That's their model. We'll just be friends then. Oh, oh God, no. No, no, I'm still going to cling on to you. I'm not fucking <laughs> So he's not going to be with the boys anymore then? He's going to go his own way? will keep me safe. Remember what I told you. Don't be a gun. <laughs> oh, gee, that's cool. Yeah, it's probably best if he doesn't hang out with Butcher just yet. Yeah. Don't be a gun. Mm. And the White House is opening an office of Soup Affairs. Victoria Newman is the new czar. Oh. She's sneaking me some off the books funding for a team that can keep tabs on the soups. The boys are going to become official. Yeah. Oh, M.M.'s back with his family. M.M.'s back with his family. Oh, he's jerking off over the city. Oh. Is it that damn fresco? Does anyone who drink, who drink the fresco die? No, who is it? Who is it? It's Vic! Vic is a soup! Newman is a soup! She killed Dingy, Vogelbaum, and her own staff member. And Mallow and the, the Rainer, she killed Rainer. The research you asked. Don't get me wrong, I, I, I just don't want to fight Vought. I just want to do it the right way. Not covered in quite as many guts. Oh, you're around the wrong person. You're with the wrong person. Look, the truth is, I never totally. When can you start? Oh, no. <laughs> Holy fuck. Holy fuck. Oh jeez, okay, you know what? I was wrong. I was wrong. That was a finale. That was definitely a finale. That was that, that was a finale, but that was so much packed into a finale from you know, from meeting Becca to well, from seeing Becca meet the others to hatching a plan to rescue to fighting Stormfront to rescuing to rescuing Ryan to fighting Stormfront and seeing Stormfront die and you know <coughs> um and to the ending, like this six, seven, eight, ten thousand different events packed into one. Like, holy crap, holy crap. Okay, I don't, I don't know where to start with this shit. This is, this finale is actually. I, uh, Amazon knows how to do finales. Amazon knows how to do finales. Okay, so I want to talk about that ending first. I want to talk about the ending first because that's that's fresh on my mind. That's, that's freshest on my mind. So Victoria Newman is the head. <laughs> There's the one who actually blows up heads and stuff. She's the one. She's a soup. She's a soup and she has the power to blow up people's heads. Um, and stuff. And her eyes change and stuff. Her eyes actually change colour. Like they change kind of like, you know, layout or whatever, whatever you want to call it. But she is the one who has the power to blow up soup's heads. And she that is exactly what she does. She blows up people's heads. But, I, yeah, then, I don't know. I don't know. So does she work for, I mean, oh, oh, I think, I think, hmm. It could be, it could be a case of, um, it could be a case of, she's the inside person. She's the mole inside of Congress for Vought. Yeah, Vought needs someone inside the government to help do their dirty work and to do their bidding, get rid of anyone they want, but they want, but they want to cover their tracks, don't want to look suspicious and get someone on the inside to actually do it. So then, so then, yes, and that would make sense then, yeah, she, 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 she was the one blowing up all those heads in the last episode, she killed Vogelbaum, her own staff was a sacrifice of her own, maybe, or maybe just someone she didn't really mind killing, 
I think I think it, I think she she could work for Boyer because I think the very first death in this season that happened like that was was Reina was Reina she was the one who was getting closer and closer to what Vault was really planning and then as soon as she figured it out right on the spot in front of the boys just pfft, as soon as soon as that happened so yeah oh okay so Victoria Newman Victoria Newman so then yeah I think in this case the only logical thing must the the only logical uh, explanation must be that she does actually work for Vort in a way that maybe Homeland doesn't know. Yeah, the 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 Seven doesn't know that she works for only Edgar knows she's under Edgar's employ. Yeah, and he has her on the inside of Congress to, you know, to pass their laws and to fight for their to do their protests and everything. So yeah, so then yeah, because then it wouldn't make sense because then she she was holding that testimony and even before that she was holding the protest against Homelander. And stuff. See, so, yeah, so it wouldn't make sense. But then, yeah. But then she, 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 but then they need her to cover their tracks, so she has to put on. Maybe she has to put on that kind of front, wherein she actually does do that. Where when she actually does actually help fight for. Maybe could she be? I don't know. I honestly don't. I think maybe she doesn't work for Vort. I don't, could, could could she work for Vort? I think it would be a lot easier just to. I think because then. If she did, then the protest would have been completely unnecessary. The only, the only kind of track covering she would need to do is to kill her own staff people. Um, that would eliminate her as a suspect. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know if she actually would for, work for Vort. No, I think she, she might be just like her. She, she could just be like her own soup within Congress. She might actually, she might actually want to kill, to take down Vort. She actually might want to do that. But, huh? I don't know. I don't know, because I think, yeah, because I think, it, I think it, it would be too, I, th I, think, I feel like it would be too obvious if it worked for Vault, and, it, and it, like, you know, given what we've seen from my character so far, it might not fit in as much. Like, it would make sense, it would completely make, it would completely make sense for Edgar to want to have someone on the inside of the government to, to go that much further and actually fight for stuff on the more political, political side of things. But, yeah, I don't know, like, Victoria Newman specifically, though, I think it, it would make more sense if it was actually... A person who maybe wouldn't explicitly fight for Vort, but maybe would actually, but but you know, someone who wouldn't hold a testimony against them or hold um or hold a hearing against them and hold a protest against one of their biggest heroes. Like it would make more sense if it was someone who, who either did not who who either didn't condemn Vort's actions or maybe someone who actually just let just you know just stood idly by as Vort did their stuff. I think someone who actively, you know. Um, I think it it would be too much effort if if it was someone who actively stood against Vort and actually made protests against them and stuff. I think I think I don't know. I think she could be working for, but I think otherwise, I think I think more more or less she might actually she might just be her own soup. Yeah, she might be her own soup because she 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 killed um, Alistair. She killed Alistair. The thing, um, the thing like yeah. But then why would she kill him? He he was willing to help her take down Vort. So why would she kill him? Now? I don't know. I mean, what well, is the charge of the collective? They're a cult. They do all this stuff, and he was asking to break the law for her to expedite his um, tax stuff. So, yeah, I don't know. Maybe she wants to. Maybe she still wants to uphold the law. Maybe she wants to take down Vort herself. Maybe she wants to actually be the congresswoman, the congresswoman who takes down Vort. Um, I don't know. I feel, yeah, I feel like it, I mean, it's still a possibility. I'm not going to disregard it completely. It's still a possibility, but I do think that it's more likely that she is her own soup within Congress. She is like the woman the like the Congress the Congress the Congresswoman with power of her own, with literal superpowers of her own. Um but yeah I'm not gonna I I I won't disregard her working with all for Philly, but I think it's more likely that she's actually that, yeah. Hmm. Okay, so she's the head bomb soup and now Huey's going to work for her. And now Huey is going to work for her. So I pray to God she doesn't kill him. I think if she kills him then it would prove that she actually works for her. I think yeah, if, if she kills, if she tries to kill him next season, or does manage to kill him, I, I, don't, I don't know if they would kill off Huey, he's the guy, he's one of the guys who started all of this, but if, if she tries to kill him next season, then it would it would actually, then, then that might prove that she actually works with Vought, and stuff like that, so, yeah, so, and she's, um, she's the new, uh, head of Office of Super Affairs, she's the head of Office of Super Affairs, and, um, and, and, you know, according to Mallory, she was actually, you know, offering some funding for, like, a, a team like the boys, a, a team like the boys, so, yeah, okay, so, yeah, this, 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 this finale definitely opens the doors up for some stuff on Season 3, it definitely opens the doors up for some stuff on Season 3, 
Um, yeah, I think I, I take that back. I take back everything I said completely. It, you know, we, we definitely have some loose ends here, some open ends, some story worth continuing. Um, and yeah, I think they definitely, again, it's like they packed it, they packed a lot of stuff into, like, an hour. They packed a lot of stuff into the hour that we got in this. But at the same time, everything they packed in, it wasn't exactly too much. It was enough to actually wrap up the story that was season two. It was basically enough to wrap up the story that was season two. So, definitely a finale. Definitely a finale. Um, but yeah, speaking of the church, um, so yeah, Alistair's last move. Alistair's last move beyond uh, before that was actually getting a train back into the seven he got a train back into seven um and stuff because now because because now stormfront's out so now edgar should have no issues um getting a black guy back into the into the seven so a train is now back in and the deep wasn't in the deep wasn't in because again here because alistair was following edgar's kind of um saying where you know like one is i can't remember what he said one is something um Two is weakness. One is, yeah, I think a word stuck with a D, was it? One is, what did he say? What did he actually say? He said one is something, and then two, two, two was definitely weakness. Two was weakness, but I don't know what the, um, what the other one was. Oh yeah, one is redemption. Okay, not 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 starting with a D then. Not starting with the D. One hero, back in is redemption. The other is weak. The other is weakness. So yeah, I mean, but A Train didn't really, you know. I mean, I mean, are they talking about the heroes or Vought? Like Vought is redeeming themselves with another hero, or the hero is redeeming themselves with a new position. I think it could be the position. I mean, well, no. I mean, A Train had the medical stuff going on. A Train had the medical position going on. So he goes back in. He redeems his position. Shows that he's actually worthy. He's clean. And everything like that. So okay, so one hero is redemption, two is weakness. Showing that they have two of them back in means that they need all the all the help they can get. And Vault is not about help. Vault gives stuff out. They don't take stuff in. So yeah. Um, so yeah, his last his last move was actually was actually getting a train back in the seven. And then he fired the deep too. He he, he told the deep that you know he was like that like a toxic personality, just like eat all the archer. And then he told him to leave. And then. Deep's parting words being fuck fresco. So, yeah, that is that. So now I think I think season three will I think will definitely have, um, will definitely have um, the church coming back in. But I think with a new leader, I think it could be um, I think Carol. Yeah, I think I, could, I think I think it could, it could be Carol. I think it, it, it could be Carol um, actually becoming the head now because I think she's the only other kind of high profile or like guiding member, the only member of kind of guidance or mentorship we've seen in, in this season so far from the collective. So I think she I think she I think it could either be her actually getting that position because they need someone new or her fighting for that position because they need someone new. But either way they need they need, they need new leaders. So I think the church will likely be coming back will very very like they very likely be coming back in season three with some new leadership. So yeah, um so he trains back in. He trains back in, and he he got them the stormfront info. He got them. The, he he overheard the conversation that he, that um, Edgar and uh, Alistair were having, and he and he heard them saying that you know stormfront has a problem with a train. So now they can't they can't disappoint her. They can't disappoint her. So I think yeah. Um, so yeah. So then he went into the church archives and stole um, stole information about Stormfront, um, especially her history, um, her history being a Nazi, and her history being a super duper racist Nazi and everything, so he stole all that information and then handed it off to, um, to Addie and Huey, and then, yes, he did his piece, he, he, he helped, you know, he helped them get Stormfront off so that he could get back in, so yeah, and, and he even said, now we're even, now we're even, so if they do try anything now against the Seven or against the Vulture or against him, he will have no problem actually fighting back and maybe even killing either of them this time. So, yeah, yeah, I don't know how it's going to go, but A-Train's back in the seven. A-Train is back in the seven. But speaking of Stormfront, oh, jeez, Stormfront, hmm, okay. So, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I said I wanted to see her die. I said I wanted to see her die, and we, I think we got, like, a fair, a fair amount close to it. We got a fair amount close to it. She... That that kind of thing, I did. I, I mean, I, I did see it coming. I did see it coming because I think that was what they were trying to teach him, like from the beginning, like when um, Stormfront, uh, Stormfront and Homelander were trying to teach him to hate something. He was using that. He remembered her own words that you know he needed to hate something, um, 
And you even her speech about oh they're gonna come they're gonna come and kill us just because of how we look and because of the color of our skin it's called white genocide I have uh, I don't think I've ever cringed harder in my life hearing shit like that I don't, I don't think I've ever cringed harder in my life and yeah as soon as I heard that I was like okay indoctrination is one thing this is just spoon feeding him BS that's just spoon feeding him BS but you know whatever they could do I mean on the one hand it was whatever they could do to actually get him to understand what they wanted him to do but on the other hand it is something like it, it's what Stormfront's parroting is what this was Stormfront literally parroting and even her defending herself to Annie saying like you know um the people the, 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 the people who listen to her words actually like what she has to say the only thing they don't like is the fact that she it, it is the word Nazi so then she tries not to be a Nazi whilst parroting Nazi like 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 you know like recycled Nazi propaganda um, without actually adding like a great big flaming swastika to it you know like without adding any that any any the any, any that kind of obvious stuff she then tells the people what they want to hear which is exactly what Hitler did back then which is exactly what Hitler did he didn't really he didn't it's like he he he, he didn't you know um, you know, like, paint it as any obvious kind of bigotry or hatred. He literally just told the Germans what they wanted to hear. He literally told his people what they wanted to hear, and then they followed him into war and stuff. So it's basically what Stormfront's doing. It is basically what Stormfront was doing in the modern day, telling people what they wanted to hear, giving them an enemy to fear, giving them something to fear, so that then they'd actually have something to target in the end and actually, like, you know, just, like, um, expel their anger towards. So, yeah, um... But yeah, and that fight scene, my god, that fight scene was good. That fight scene, it had my, my heart was pumping. My heart was pumping the entire time, because I didn't know who was going to live and who was going to die. Like, like, she rocked the car off. I thought it was going to blow up at some point. I literally thought we'd lose all three, like, well, but, um, two of them. I thought we'd lose, um, lose MM and Becca. Like, she, she, she literally just rocked it off to the side, and it was in slow motion, toppling, toppling over and over. So I thought, you know, like, the last time we had a vehicle toppling over, Huey got impaled by shrapnel, so I wasn't exactly you know, relieved or ecstatic to see what would happen in this, like, but the entire time, as soon as Stormfront arrived, my heart was pounding, like, you know, she could kill any of them with, you know, a single stroke, and I thought she killed Kimiko, if she had killed Kimiko, I actually, I, I don't know what I would have done, but, you know, you know, ki like, I, I genuinely thought for a second she actually killed Kimiko, she actually, I, I thought she actually killed Kimiko, but then I remembered, you know, back in season one, we thought Black Noir killed her with that gash up the side of her, uh, up the side of her stomach and everything. The gash that could kill her, that could kill a normal human being. But she's a soup in more ways than one. It's not just she, she, she has speed, she has strength and agility, some more. But she also has a healing factor. She also has a healing factor. So even if someone snaps her neck like Stormfront did, she just snapped it back into place and got back up. And then yeah, and then Maeve comes along. Maeve comes along. Um, and she calls her. I think she called her like a kraut. She called her a kraut, which is, I, I mean, I, I know it's German, I know it's German, but I don't, I don't know what, I think, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what it's German for, but I've heard it in, like, yeah, like, in, in the Call of Duty games, the, um, the, like, the, that are based in, like, World War Two and feature the, feature the Nazis as, as enemies, I've, I've heard it being used there, and I think sauerkraut is a thing, yeah, sauerkraut, is, I think I'm, I'm gonna look that up, I don't know, I don't know what kraut is, I've heard of sauerkraut, and I've vaguely heard of kraut, but I don't know what it actually is uh so it's a i don't know i think wait isn't that isn't that the kind of stuff they put on it's is it, they, they put on, they put it on hot dogs yeah crowd they put it on like hot dogs oh okay i've, I've had that i've had that i've, I've had i've had um i found one of those i don't know i don't know if it was i mean are they, are they the same thing are they is crowd and sour crowd the same thing i don't i don't know I've, I've had that on hot dogs i remember i've had that on hot dogs so she called her <laughs> She called her that, okay, uh, as soon as the Stormfront info was leaked and everyone at Vought was reacting to it as soon as she walked in, I figured she, as she walked past, past Maeve, Maeve looked after her with, these really dim, with this really demeaning kind of facial expression and stuff, and demeaning look in her eyes, so as soon as she said that, I, as soon as I saw that, I figured, okay, Maeve is not going to appreciate this one bit, she's not going to appreciate it one bit. Um, and especially having like a Hispanic, like especially having a Hispanic, a Hispanic girlfriend, she's not gonna you know appreciate you know having to work with someone like that. So then, it would you know make her, um, or at least having an ex-girlfriend. But either, either way, those details aren't important right now. But you know, you know she's not gonna be happy to work with someone like that. She's not gonna be happy to work with someone like that. You know, Homelander is the line. Homelander is the is, is the line crossing she already has to tolerate. She's not gonna she, she she's not gonna tolerate another one like him. So. 
Yeah, so very fitting that she shows up, and then the girls get it done, the real, the real girls, you know, um, Kimiko, and Starlight, and Mae, they get it done, they get it done, they just, they literally, I, 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 I love that it went from actual super-powered beatings, like, it went from superpowers and super hard beatings to literally just kicking the crap out on the ground. Like, it went from a superhero fight to a literal street fight, just, you know, just flooring her and then just stomping her face in and just, you know, just kicking her and stuff like that. And even the lines they even the lines they were using, like, like, like it, I love how quickly it went from that to that. Like, you know, like, you, you get a good, like, five minutes of super punches and light beams and electricity and other stuff like that. And then as soon as she's on the ground, as soon as she's on the ground, just fists to the, just feet to the face, just feet to the face and stuff, so, yeah, I don't know, <laughs> even the boy, even, um, Huey and Frenchie and M.M. looking on like, well, damn, they're getting it done, they're definitely getting it done, um, see, and Kimiko laughed, I just remember that, Kimiko laughed, she laughed, her laugh is beautiful, her laugh is actually beautiful, and it's as, as soon as, you know, she, she started to freeze up, she actually started to freeze up um, hearing Stormfront talk and stuff, so I, I figured, you know, she, like, she either might actually freeze up, or she might go after Stormfront herself, but no, she just starts laughing, she just starts laughing, I think we've never heard a peep out of her, we've never heard, so, like, even when she cries, she, we, even when she cries, she, we've never heard so much as a peep out of her, so the first thing we hear from her, the very first sound we hear from her, which is very fitting, is her laughing at Stormfront, is her laughing at Stormfront, so, <sighs> yeah, she's, she's amazing, so yeah, she's, she, and, 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 and she's been teaching, um, Frenchie, um, some, some of her custom sign language too, so, she made him translate her stuff for her, so, that was cool, that was fun, but yeah, that, that fight, that fight scene, that fight scene was great, it was amazing. And Ryan, um, towards the beginning of this episode, he was overwhelmed. He was very, very easily overwhelmed. Um, and I think, yeah, I think you can't blame him. Like, what? Why would they do that? Though, like, you know, like they, 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 they took him to a location that you know they should have known he would get overwhelmed at because they took him to Planet Vort, the company that employs them, and they're two of the most well-known celebrities in America. So they take him to a very, very public place where there are a lot of Vort and Seven fans around. And all of a sudden, they're surprised that, you know, teenagers and kids and whatnot start clamoring around them, asking for selfies and whatnot. And as soon as that happens, it just, it will be, you, you see how bad, how bad it becomes for Ryan. Like, he just, you know, he, he no longer even has, a, has his father talking to him. He just has, you know, like, um, he just has people clamoring around him, clamoring around Stormfront and, and Homelander to get pictures with him. And it's too much for him. Like, you know, any, any normal, any reasonable, I mean... Yeah, keyword being reasonable, but any reasonable person, not even like a human, like not, not not even like a regular or super human being, but like any regular, any reasonable person would know that, you know, especially with how high status they are, they cannot afford to go into a public place like that with Ryan and not expect to, to be hounded by fans and paparazzi or whatever else. Um, yeah, I mean, well, something tells me they don't really have much of a paparazzi problem because they could literally just kill the paparazzi and no one would care, but... I don't know. I I don't know. But yeah, like they 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 very much should have known. But then, Homelander did. Homelander did notice it, and he took him out, and then flew him out, and flew him out to the cabin, and stuff. See, so, yeah, and it was the same cabin. The same cabin he killed um, Doppelganger at. So I'm wondering. I'm, I'm, I can't help but wonder what he did with the body. <laughs> if he actually disposed of the body, or what happened with the body. Like it was the same. It was the exact same cabin. He was holding. Uh, doppelganger at, where he was using Doppelganger to live out his fantasies of Stillwell, so, yeah, uh, I don't know, I don't know, yeah, and I think they definitely made her vulnerable, I think, yeah, I think, I think, I don't know if they made her, I don't know if, if the other, if the other women made her vulnerable after the beating they gave her, or if she actually just wasn't as in, as immune to melee attacks as her, as her man, like, her man, you could punch him and you'd probably break your own hand doing it, you know, he's bulletproof, he's, you know, everything, almost everything proof. Um, but with, but with Stormfront, she actually, I mean, it, it, it made sense that she took a beating from the other, from the other soups, like from, from Starlight and Annie, and uh, Starlight, Annie, Starlight and Maeve and Kimiko, because they are soups, they have strength, um, more, more than that of the average human, so it makes sense that, you know, they would land some attacks, but then, you know, um, Becca goes at her with the knife, and it goes right through her eye, it goes right through her eye, so I think, Yes, yeah, so I, I, I can't tell if she's actually not as immune as as we think to melee stuff as as Homelander is, or if or or if the the other the soups actually just managed to weaken her enough for that knife to do some damage. But either way, it did it did fuck all. It did fuck all. Like you know, she just 
pulled it right out again. Didn't really care for having lost an eye. And then, you know, just held back against the tree in the chokehold and everything. That scene, my god, that scene was heartbreaking. That scene was actually heartbreaking. I mean, I figured Stormfront would actually be the one to kill Becca. I, th I, th I thought the way it might go. I thought the way, the way it might go. You know, I, I, I was kind of on two minds in that moment. I thought either um, uh, Ryan might unleash his power and kill Stormfront and that would be that. Or Stormfront might actually kill Becca. That would make... Um, Ryan angry, and then he would go and kill back. I, I, I thought either way he's gonna, he, I thought either way he's gonna have to end up killing Stormfront, and it's gonna be like a nice little full circle thing. Like she gives, she finally gives him someone to hate, and it's her, um, which he was doing, uh, which she was doing. You know, um, you know the gun Billy had did nothing. He went out, with, he went out with a, like a with a crowbar, and that did nothing. So seeing her hurting uh, Becca so much, seeing her hurting his mother so much, was what finally set him off. So then. Yeah, so then, yeah, and again, he's in, he's new to all this. He's he's never actually unleashed his his, his blast. He's he's never unleashed his laser blast. He's only ever used it like to make his eyes glow and intimidate people. Like he's never actually fired a full blast. So the first one he does sends Billy flying. It sends it barbecues um you know like Stormfront being the target. It barbecues her and sends her flying. And she loses almost all of her limbs. Um, <sighs> And it killed Becca too. It killed Becca too. Yeah, her her death was heartbreaking. Her death was heart. It was heartbreaking to have to watch, and it was heartbreaking to have to listen to the very very last minute conversation her and her and, and Butcher were having. Butcher was just on the edge. Butcher was in tears. He was breaking down. He was trying to save her. He, he couldn't do anything. And um, Becca, Becca, knowing Ryan, her last words are, "This isn't his fault." You know, it's not as well. You know, like like. A, like back and um, Ryan is just standing in the corner, um, you know, just 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 whimpering in tears. He's constantly apologizing. He's he, that kid's gonna probably gonna have some PTSD next season from that. Um, but yeah, he's in tears. He's whimpering. He's crying. He's apologizing constantly. And then, you know, uh, Becca spends her last few breaths um, reassuring Ho uh, reassuring Butcher that you know it's not his fault. He's a good kid. He didn't mean to do this. So don't. It. Don't let him think that this is his fault. Don't let him think this is his fault. Don't, 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 don't let this change him or be the reason he goes down any kind of dark path. Like, it's not his fault, so make sure he remembers that. And to also look after him. She actually did make him promise to look after him, so... Yeah, that, no, that, oh, Becca and Butcher. No more Becca and Butcher. No more Becca and Butcher. That, oh. <sighs> That one actually gets. That one actually makes me sad. That death actually makes me sad as fuck. Like, you know, he, he spent so many years, so much time, so much effort, fighting to get Becca back, and she dies in his arms. She dies, in his arms, at the hands of her own son. <sighs> that one actually. That 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 death actually upsets me. That actually upsets me. That. You know, that is like a, that's like a Mary Winchester style death. That's a Mary Winchester style death. Like, you know, um, like it, it's an Eric, Eric Kripke run show. So one pattern, I, a pattern I only actually uh, noticed recently, a pattern I only noticed recently is that, you know, like with Supernatural, Eric Kripke, er, Eric Kripke, you know, kills off the girlfriend within the first episode. Like, you know, in Supernatural, Jess died at the end of the first episode. Um, and in The Boys, Robin dies within, like, the first ten freaking minutes of the first episode. So he just, he doesn't let the girlfriends die, but any mother figures, any, like, God forbid there are any mother figures in, a, a, any mothers or mother figures in Eric Kripke shows, he will kill them off too. He will kill them off too. So he kills off, uh, I mean, I don't know if he's still actually in charge of Supernatural. I think, I think, I think it's actually, it's, it's someone else now. Yeah, I think, I think he was in charge of season one to five, but I think... Well, I, I, I think he might have. I, I think he might still have some involvement. He he might still have some involvement, but not like completely. Like he 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 had more control over season one to five, and then after that, the, someone else actually took over. But he still had some sense, some level of involvement. But he has now, now having created the boys, um, he has much more involvement in this. So yeah. So and, and, and God forbid there are any mothers in Eric Kripke shows. They will not survive. They will not survive. So you know, Mary dies. Um, last season of Supernatural, and now with this one, Becca dies at the end of the season, at the, the second season. So, yeah, but this this was actually ter this the, this was emotional as fuck. This was emotional as all hell, and it was not easy seeing her go. It was not easy seeing her go. So, 
Yeah, I don't know how this might affect Ryan now. I think this is definitely going to affect him because, um, because for one thing, he's no longer with Butcher. He's no longer with Butcher, uh, but he's now with Mallory. So I don't know what's going to happen there. I think. Yeah, I think Mallory is connected to Newman, so I don't know if if Ryan being in her possession is the safest is the safest thing because then if Newman finds out that you know Mallory has um, that Mallory is connected to Homelander's kid or that she has Homelander's kid in her custody, then she might try and kill him because that is well I don't know again I think that's all dependent on whether or not she's actually working for Vault or whether or, or if she's actually her own her own suit but. I don't know, but, yeah, I don't know, but either way, Ryan, I think he, he's definitely going to have an, I mean, assuming he actually gets brought in for season three, I think, I think, I said this in the reaction, but thinking about it more now, I, I think it would be cool if the show went on long enough for us to see Ryan grow up, but I don't know if that's actually going to be a thing that happens, or if that's even going to be something they explore, I don't know if that's going to be something they explore, I think, I think, I think it could go down that route of the, of the fact that they now bring, Ryan in for each season and maybe just up, uh, upgrade the actor like just uh, choose a different actor to show like a different age range but um but I don't know or or, or, or like you know that they, they, they might bring him in they might not show him for a couple of seasons and then fast forward a couple of seasons they might actually bring him back in then as like a surprise like oh surprise Ryan's back now and he's got like a really big pivotal plot point in the story like that I think if they go down that route I think the route they're going now I think at some point, we could have like a Ryan versus Homelander showdown because Ryan is the only one with those powers, and there go Ryan is the closest thing we have to someone who matches Homelander's power level. So, if they want to take out Homelander, then Ryan is their only bet. So I think for that reason, they either might show us him growing up uh, as the seasons go by, or they might not bring him back for a couple of seasons. And actually, then by the time he comes back in, he's already he, he's already kind of trained with his powers. He's already learned his powers. He's already kind of grown up and stuff like that so yeah I don't know or, or, or he or, or they might because like Stormfront isn't neutralized and um, Stormfront isn't dead she's neutralized and they've got her in like a in like a um a classified location um and she's you know just in barely living condition she's in a barely living condition so I think if they if they bring him back they might inter they might bring him back by first showing us him taking out Stormfront yeah, he takes out Stormfront first, then then he works with the boys to take out Homelander. That might be the way they go down. I don't know, cause I I don't know, I don't, cause for one thing, I don't know if, if Ryan is in the comics, and even if he is, I don't know what what his what his story in that is, or like how long he survives, or what he does, um, and stuff like that. So I don't know, I don't know, but Ryan definitely has a lot ahead of him. He lost his mum, you know, he lost his mum. He was raised by his mom for eight years and found out that the entire thing was a lie and then he got kidnapped by by Homelander and Stormfront and then they fought to get to him and then he accidentally killed his mum whilst trying to kill Stormfront. So I think I think that could be something that helps him train with his powers. Like like you know the first, like he, he he'll have some kind of awareness some level of awareness that the first time he used his powers, um he ended up killing his mum because he didn't have control over it. It was the first time he actually properly used them. He never used it before. So if he actually learns to use them, he can actually help people instead of killing them. So I think I think that might be like a, like a, like more of a turning point for him. Like you know, what everything he does is to avenge his mother who died by his own hand. But I just I just hope that his his mum's death doesn't actually fuck him up and doesn't you know turn him down some kind of psychopath. But I don't know. I guess we'll see. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Maeve, Maeve hit rock bottom, Maeve definitely hit rock bottom, she um, was very very judgmental towards, <laughs> towards Huey, she was very judgmental towards Huey, um, even the way she looked at him for like a good five seconds before actually looking back at Star, being like, hey, this is the guy you risked it all for, this, like, I could snap him like a toothpick, and so I think, I, think I, I, did, I don't know why that, that's everyone's observation, like, you know, Homelander looking at a picture of him back in season one, being like, you know, oh, um, you know, he's he's not just a man, like he's barely even a man in that photo, like he's very very skinny, very lanky, he could couldn't do shit to anyone. And then even Maeve calling him like a twink and stuff and calling him a toothpick and things like that. Like everyone is always, you know, just you know, judging a book by its cover. But we forget he killed Translucent. Okay, maybe not with his bare hands, but he still pulled the trigger that killed Translucent. You know, and he's he he's he's intuitive, he's smart, he knows his stuff. You know, way back uh, early days early days of season one, he was basically their tech support, so you know, he has qualities, he has qualities, there's a, lot, there's a lot more to people than just brawn and, and muscle and, 
stuff like that. So yeah, um, so yeah, so Maeve hit rock bottom. She you know, she, she 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 declined their testimony request. She declined the testimony request and claimed that it's because nothing they do matters. Nothing they do matters, and they can't really. There's nothing they can do that would actually help fight to vote or fight their forces or whatever they want to do to the world. So she didn't really believe in fighting with them or against them anymore. She 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 just queen Maeve. She was just queen Maeve. But then she came in um, at the fight. She came in at the fight and did her piece, which was really cool. And then at the very end, the very end, we have I think now we have like four. We have four. The A train is back, and so we have four. We have Homelander. We have Queen Maeve. Starlight and A Train now. Black Noir is unresponsive, they call him a vegetable. Um, so so we have four. We have four of the seven left. We have four of the seven left. So yeah, I think I think what makes sense is Vault still using the seven in a in like a cooperative and positive light to kind of give off that public image, to maintain that public image that the, that the seven is still a team and that they still work together and cooperate and stuff. But deep down we know that, you know, Maeve's blackmailing actually worked. Maeve's blackmailing worked. I was literally any t like, like as soon as she as soon as she showed that thing, that, that 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 video, as soon as she showed that video, I thought I was so afraid. I was wondering like I was wondering like, you know, um this show, the one of the what one of the one of the favorite ways of this show to kill people is just by surprise. Like it will literally just, you know, show you like one camera angle aimed at the person's face and the next thing you know, they're dead. Like, you know, either they're blown up or they're lasered in half or something. Like, you know, whatever happens, you know, I thought he'd cut her off in mid sentence with a laser eye to the neck and behead or something. I, I, I was wondering, is she, is she actually immune to his laser eyes? Is she immune to his powers? Like she's bulletproof, kind of, from her arm anyway, but is she, is she actually immune his laser eyes. I, I thought, you know, this might be what crosses the line from. This might be what causes him to finally snap at Maeve. He might actually kill Maeve now because he has no, because he doesn't see her the same way anymore. So he might kill her, and then he might hunt down Elena too, and actually, you know, get rid of her too on, on, on the side. But no, he actually, he actually takes her threat to heart. He actually, you know. She, he he warns her. He warns her that you know um, that, 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 that that he'll kill everything and everyone. He'll just go full on berserk, like 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 his imagination of the protest, but only real and global. Um, and then yeah, she still goes forward with it. So yeah, so the threat worked. The threat worked. So they they, they were able, they were able to paint it as Stormfront being the one behind the um, the heads blowing up at court and, uh, and and stuff like that. So they they painted her as a threat and that she was neutralized. And in a, in a in a classified location and stuff. So, yeah, Vault being Vault, they had a handle on things. And yeah, Huey's mother, Huey's mother, little, little tidbit. She actually listened to Vault. No, she listened to Vault. She listened to Billy Joel. She listened to Billy Joel. So yeah, I I, I could have sworn it was either this season or last season. But I could have sworn he mentioned something about his mother dying. I could have sworn he mentioned something about his mother dying. But no, he actually. He either self-corrects or actually reveals it for the first time here. She actually left. She left when he was six. Just one day, just, you know, up and left and no, you know, goodbye, no, you know, warning, no nothing. So, yeah, so all, all, all the, like, for six years, like, that they, they were having dance parties and, you know, jamming along to Billy Joel together. And then one day, six years later, she just disappears. So then that's why... For, so for one thing, that's why he loves Billy Joel, because it's the one memory he has of her, the one positive memory, just music, just good, good classic music. And for another thing, um, he doesn't want to he, he doesn't want to be like her. He does not want to be like her. He, he doesn't want to up and leave someone. He doesn't want to leave someone in any way. He wants to actually hang in there, show some loyalty. I mean, I, I mean, I, I feel bad using the word loyalty, because I think, you know, we don't know for a, we, we, we don't know why she left so... We don't know that she she left because she didn't want Huey or his dad anymore. She was like, we, 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 we don't know what her circumstances were or anything. Like, he even said, like, he, he said specifically there's no, there was no explanation. So, there's no way of guaranteeing exactly why she left. So, I feel bad in that sense using the word loyalty because she, 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 she still likely cared about him. But just, you know, for whatever reason, she felt that leaving was better for her um, than, it, than, than, than staying was. So... Yeah, but then he doesn't want to end up like her, he doesn't want to actually leave people like that, so he wants to hang in there, stick in, be, you know, be there for people when they need him, and when they need someone, so... Yeah, so a little tidbit on Huey's background. And yeah, that is it. That is, well, I mean, it's, it's all I've written down, it's all I've written down for this, but I think that's pretty much all I can remember from this episode. So yeah, season three definitely opens up a lot of routes. Season, season three definitely opens up a lot of pathways for what could happen. 
and who could uh, who could have fun and stuff like that. So, yeah, we have. So yeah, we. I mean, yeah. So the boys are disbanded now. The boys are effectively disbanded. MM's back with his family. MM's back with his family. Billy is going off on his own, doing God knows what. Kimiko and Frenchy are off dancing. They're off dancing, and 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 Huey is joining Congress. Huey is actually joining Victoria Newman. So. I think those will be interesting parts to see explored, see exactly where they go, and see, I, th I think, see if season three, like, see if, um, see if the boys can actually stay apart, like, with Victoria Newman now being the soup that's taken out people who are threats to vote, um, yeah, and, like, like Victoria Newman being that, being that kind of a soup, and now we have Ryan off in the wind with Mallory, and we have Homelander now... He was jerking off over the city. He was on. I, th I think. I think he was at seven tower. He had to be at seven tower. Like he was. He was standing on something. He was standing on the edge of some kind of tower, um, and just literally just pants down, jerking off at the city, and Dima and just you know like just repeating. He he can do whatever the fuck he wants and everything. So he was you know just orgasming at the city. He's he's got a, he's got a skyline fetish. He's got a skyline fetish. So he was doing that. I, th I think I think he's going more and more manic. He's going more and more manic as time goes by. So we got that, and then. We have other stuff going on, so yeah, every, like you know, some people are going their own paths, some people are discovering new paths, and some people are doing completely, completely different things. So yeah, it's we've got a hell of a path among us. We, we we've got a hell of a path ahead of us with season three, and season three I'm excited to see because we have Jensen Ackles joining the Soldier Boy. I want to I want to see Soldier Boy. I want I want to see Jensen doing something, uh, doing something new. I think he's. Uh, now officially done with Supernatural. He's a he's officially done with Supernatural. So I think it's good to see. I think you know him and Jared, Jensen and Jared are moving on. Still, Jensen's got um, Jared's got Walker, Texas Ranger on the CW, um, and uh, Jensen has got the boys now. Jensen's got the boys. So I'm hoping it's actually a lasting thing. I'm hoping it's a lasting thing. He actually sticks around and does some stuff. So he's gonna be the Captain America of the boys. He's going to be the Captain America, like, he's like the boy scout of the boys. He's going to be Soldier Boy. So I am looking forward to meeting him, to seeing him. Um, and anyone else they might introduce, anyone else, any, 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 any other soups they might introduce, and any, any other storylines and stuff they might introduce. So, yeah, season three should be fun. Season three should be very fun. But this one, season two, was a, was a hell of a ride. It was a much, much darker, much, much heavier ride. You know, it was a lot more hard hitting than season one. Like season two, they kind of pulled out some stops, pulled out a few more stops. I feel like they they probably can go darker, and they probably will go darker with season three. But season two, they definitely show that there are some themes and some, you know, stories and characters they're not they're not like afraid to include and and, and cross and stuff. They're like there's some stuff they're not actually afraid to go to. And I think it's the it's the it's, it's the depth of the story. It's the depth of this show. Like you know, even the comics, like the comics are said to be about ten times worse. So. The show is extremely toned down, even for what it is. Um, so yeah, so God only knows what season three holds in store for us. God only knows. Um, but yeah, season two has been fun. Season two has been super duper fun, and I think I think I, 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 I probably would have enjoyed it more if I had actually caught up to season one in time. Because as you guys probably know, my kind of you know reaction, um, you know kind of schedule was actually just binge reacting to season one. And still not getting here in time for season two. I think I think I think I was caught up. To, I was caught up with season one by the time the first three episodes of season two had actually aired, and then I actually and luckily for me, those three episodes had actually released all in one go. So everyone had the chance to digest it. So I was able to actually jump right into that too. Um, but yeah, it's been a fun ride. It's been a fun, fun wild ride. So I look forward to seeing what season three holds. But yeah, that is it. That is definitely all I have for this one. I have a bit of a headache coming on from having digested all of this stuff. Um, not, not necessarily a headache, but it's just like a lot to take in, and I've been talking for a while, so that's getting to me. Um, but yeah, that is pretty much all I've got, so let me know what you guys thought of this episode, of this season, um, and everything, and let me know what, what your theories are for season three, and who you hope to see, and what you hope to see, and what you think might go down. But yeah, that is pretty much it. So that was The Boys, Season 2, Episode 8, titled What I Know. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you guys enjoyed it, then salt and burn the like button. Uh, comment on what you thought of the episode and what you think of thought, thought this season as a whole and what you think might be coming up next. Um, once again, the full-length reaction will be coming up uh, over on Patreon, so you can go check that over there. And yeah, that is it. So I will see you guys next time.